What's going on, friends and family? This is Slim, the voice of League of Lions Wrestling, and we'd like to welcome you to the second edition of the Lions Den. Before we get started on this thing, I want to remind everybody to check out everything on social media. Follow us on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all that good jazz. Check us out. Give us a like, a subscribe, all that good stuff. That way you don't miss anything. Check this guy out, too, on his uh, socials. Well, we got the Chris Preston show. We've had five episodes so far. We got six episodes. Six episodes. Yep. All right. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit personal about me. Wrestling fan from a kid. You grow up, you start doing adult things, and then you see a friend from high school that says, Hey, why don't you go check out this independent wrestling show over there at my dad's house? October 2009. I mean, this guy right here. Tonight's guest is Mr. I'm Better Than You, Chris Preston. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Like I said, 2009, 14 years since I met you. Yeah, it's been... Uh, <laughs> How long have we been in the game? It's been a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm 18 years in as of May, so uh, I guess I'm finally legal, you know? You're legal? Yeah. You're legal. <laughs> All right. So, again, I just said about me, I've been fan as a kid what got you into the wrestling game uh being a fan as a kid you know um watching wrestling as a kid with my father um watching you know hulk hogan randy savage was my guy back in the day um you know it was just it just grew up with it you know that's that's you know it's just part of the family i guess you know i got you so how did we transition from being the kid that likes wrestling to being the one in the ring being the wrestler uh, well, so I had a friend named uh, Dustin that um, when I went to his house, he came over. That's all we did, wrestle, trampoline, wrestling, beat each other up on the trampoline. Um, we, we even, we went to his grandparents' farm. They had a huge barn. We converted it to a wrestling arena and had shows for ourselves. Um, each of us, you know, we had like five characters apiece. And we do shows where we're wrestling each other, but as different personas. That's it. Um, and what age were you during all this? Uh, age probably like twelve to seventeen. So I mean, there's a good, there's a long stint there. Um, That's cool. We had we had stages built. You know, we built. You know, we built a ring. Um, it, you know, it was just being kids. We were bored throughout the summer and. And we decided to, uh, you know, make the best of it. And uh, his stepmom was trying to get in good with, you know, get in his good graces. And she actually went to school, uh, to college with uh, the owner of ACW Texas, uh, New Age Dog. So they linked up and, you know, she, she had got us a tryout. So him and I both tried out. We both got accepted to the school and, and we began training. So that goes to our next thing. Who was our trainer? We just said New Age Dog. Kind of throw us through what a, a training session was like with New Age Dog and how it progressed to get you to where you are today. So so I guess technically New Age Dog is the trainer. Um, I worked extensively with guys like Mongoose, uh, Andy Dalton. Um, Joey Titan was probably the most hands-on person. Uh, Bruiser was there, uh, Jeff, uh, which he wrestled as Maverick, uh, Cordova, um, you know, the, the, there's there's countless guys that came through that place that got in the ring, as well as Dog. Dog was, you know, in, in their um, uh, training as well, but those guys, you know, Mongoose was a big influence on me breaking into, you know, wrestling. He was, he was one of the guys that... Um, I'd say Mongoose and Joey Titan really, really, uh, really showed me the most and really helped me the most. Just invested the most time in me. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So 18 years in, we're finally legal. Yeah. Get that up. <laughs> Tell me that one moment, the, the defining moment of your career when you look back and you say, this is where I made it. Um, I would say, you know, um, I mean, early in my career, when 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 Mike told me he was putting the 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 Young Guns Championship on me, um, beat Justin Sane for the Young Guns Championship. Um, okay, well this is it. This is this is um, 
this this kind of justifies what I'm doing. Gotcha. I'm not just going out there getting beat up anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm not getting jobbed out in five minutes, getting my ass kicked, getting chopped to death, and um, I, this, you know, they're actually putting time and effort into me. They're giving me something, you know, storylines. So I think that was the point where, like, I was like, okay, I can do this. I can, I can, I can go. Gotcha. This is a very similar question, but not really a defining moment, but your favorite moment of your career. Um, man, I've had more, I don't know, that's, that's kind of difficult. Um, one of my, my most favorite moments is, is probably after the first LOL show. Um, you know, we, when we started LOL, we had, um, we had a lot of doubt going in, you know, about can we revive professional wrestling in Marshall, Texas. And we didn't know if, if League of Lions was going to be, um, if it was going to be something continue, you know, that continues, or if it was going to be a one and done spot show, that's it. Um, and I think the crowd determined that. Right. And I think after that show, we saw the crowd, the response. Um, I think that that's probably one of my favorite moments is talking to my dad, saying we can do this. Let's you know this is it. This is ours. Let's go. So I th that's probably one of my favorite moments is realizing we we have something. Now let's flip to the opposite. Your least favorite moment in your professional wrestling career. Uh, least favorite. It, it's <laughs> um, you know any any time where someone gets injured is never good. Um, ACW, there were several guys. There was a guy named Roughneck. Um, he took a tumble outside the ring um, and landed on his head on the concrete. And he was KO'd. He was stretchered out on a, you know, stretchered out to the to the hospital. Um, that was pretty scary, uh, you know, just watching that. Uh, probably, I'd say probably that or the moment I wasn't there for him, the moment that I was wrestling just insane in a casket match and I landed on my head and I was knocked out unconscious. Had so a, you were there season. physically, just not mentally. Huh? The lights were on, but nobody was home. Gotcha, gotcha. I want to continue on with that favorite moment because uh, my, my next note says, uh, how did uh, League of Lions begin and the, the School of Lions, where did that all stem from? So, um, my brother-in-law and my dad wanted wrestling. They was like, we, we need to do, we got to do something. You know, ACW was dead. Um, we're a year and a half post ACW. No, no wrestling in Marshall. They wanted to do a show. I didn't want to do a show. Um, I wanted to wrestle. I had no interest in, in booking, uh, you know, promoting any of that. I just wanted to wrestle. Um, so, you know, eventually they, they talked me into it. And uh, this was probably in June of 2013. And, you know, I said, we'll give, we're going to do a couple months um, of promoting. September, we'll do our first show. And I told those guys, and I told myself, if this first show doesn't go over, we're not doing it. We're not going to live like ACW did in its dying days where 20 people show up. This is a show for us. We're not going to do that. We're going we're gonna to have successful shows. In the moment we don't have a successful show, that's it. And uh, that first show, like, it, it kind of blew me away. You know, it was, like I said earlier, it, it kind of showed me that we can do this if you do it right. And that's what, you know, that's been kind of what we've been trying to do since then. Uh, and I think it's working. You know, we've had great crowds, especially the last, you know, year and a half. It's been consistently almost sold out or sold out or, you know, we were running out of chairs. So, I don't know. So it was a fun time when you got to scurry around and find some more chairs right yeah. right at showtime. Yeah, no doubt. That's that's good problems. That is definitely good problems. Uh, let's talk about problems. First six months, anything just stand out to where you're like, oh crap, am I really gonna do this? Uh, the trials and tribulations, I guess, of a young wrestling company. I think the biggest problem we, you know, the stress of, is anyone going to show up? You know, because we wasn't, we're still in, I was still insecure about 
is people or you know was this a fluke people are they going to show up um and then cancellations you know i found out real quick that you know, you know yeah i'll be there brother and then people are like oh my car died my 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 hamster got sick i can't make it you know the rangers are playing i, I you know but you know whatever you know traffic it you know but people they cancel Ain't yeah. anybody had that many car troubles in their life. No, they? not at all. <laughs> all right. School Alliance. When did uh, we go from just a monthly show in Marshall, Texas, to training in the, the next realm of, of our wrestlers? So, much like promoting and owning a company, I had no interest really in, in training. Um, I wanted to work out in the ring. I wanted to um, stay in shape. But I really, it wasn't my intention uh, to to open a school. And there was a guy named Chris that wanted to um, wanted to train, and I agreed to train him. So he started training. It was just him and I, just one on one training. And he eventually started wrestling as Draken. Uh, somewhere along that time, you had uh, Broken Keith. And you had JPV come into the school. And when those guys came in, that's when it really kind of became a school, I guess. And, you know, we started spreading the word, putting putting, putting it out there that, hey, we are actually a school now. We're going to try this. If you want to train, we're going um, to do it. And we've had countless, I, I probably couldn't count the amount of... Uh, people that come through and fail mm -hmm. but the guys that that do make it you know they make up a big portion of the LOL roster and they're successful you know they're they're really important intricate pieces to the League of Lions and the School of Lions you know their success stories so that's that's kind of they're kind of a, um, a testament to hey we're a good school there you go. now kind of continue with that if you had to have that proud papa moment who would it be who would be your your graduate that you saw really take this thing and run with it and probably has the most success out there right now so it's a it's kind of a three-way tie um my biggest success stories to me is in no order you know you can't i'm, I'm not listing them right, right, right. yeah uh but the storm chasers uh, Keelix Sunrise, Aaron Storm, and Matlock. All three of those guys have, uh, they hit the ground running. I showed them everything that, you know, they needed to know. And they are going out of their way to wrestle everywhere in Texas, uh, everywhere in the South. You know, they're, uh, every time I talk to any of them, it's like, hey, we're going here, going here, doing this, doing this. And it, you know that's that's that makes me proud that that my guys are becoming staples in Texas. They're well known figures. They're they're, they're a big part of wrestling outside of League of Lions. Many many different companies. Yes. All right. So we talked about the lights being on and nobody home moment. Yeah. I call it the oh shit moment. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh what is your biggest oh shit moment besides that one? Um, there was a moment at LOL where I actually said oh shit. Um, it was early, probably within the first two years. Mm -hmm. uh, Dylan Smasher was doing a dive to uh, Khan. Yep. <laughs> um, Khan threw a chair. Uh, Dylan took a head dive into the concrete through the second and top rope. Uh, split his head, separated his shoulder. Um, I forgot who came, maybe referee Chris Grimes at the time, came came back, you know, Chris, Chris, Dylan's hurt, Dylan's hurt. I peer through the curtain and I see Dylan laying on his side with just a stream of blood coming from his head. Delicious. And I'm, I literally said, oh, shit. And uh, we had to, you know, of course, get him up, get him to the hospital. And, I, like, I didn't know his shoulder was separated at first. I thought it was just a head wound. Mm -hmm. So I was more concerned about the bleeding than his shoulder. But, you know, that that, that was a, 
that was another scary moment for me. Yeah, it definitely. Is definitely a big scary moment, especially uh, you know one of your favorite guys, you know, um, laying on the ground in a pool of blood. That was that was tough. And then a couple more I want to share and get your reaction of uh, Lufkin, Con zigging when he should have zagged and eating a baseball bat. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was you know that 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 was an unfortunate accident. You know. Um, that was one of those things where, you know, like, it could have happened to anybody. Exactly. Um, you know, Colin took it like a champ. You know, he, he, you know, he got it. You know, he, he you know. They finished the match and did a great show. Yeah, he, uh, no, no hard feelings or anything like no, that. He, under, he understood it was an accident, so, and they moved uh, on from it. Broken teeth, suicide dive. Toes clipping the middle rope and face planting. You know, the only person that was, that, that took that hard, was the security that we had at the time. They were not happy with that. <laughs> and, you know, um, they took that, I think they took it harder than Keith took it. I think so too. You know, and, and that caused, you know, my dad, he doesn't get, you know, too riled up too often, but he finally told them to, you know, sit down and shut the fuck up, essentially. Right. And they were still, you know, they still were like, oh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a moment, you know, but. Um, so let's go back many years. Yeah. T.E.W. Yeah. Okay. Had a, uh, a father who was uh, pretty much a part of the show, believe it or not. He, he was a fan that was loud. Everybody loved Big Mike. And uh, he thought he was going to interact with Tommy Jaggers, and Tommy introduced him to a kendo stick. Will you remember that guy at all? There was, there, there was a... Um, <laughs> I do remember that, and when that happened, that was... You had... Polar opposite reactions. You had one of two options. Uh -huh. There was no in between. No. There was uh, Tommy. You're a piece of shit for doing that. You know. You know him. You shouldn't have done that. And then on the flip side, you had guys who were like, "Well, he crossed the cross the line. He, he crossed weighed the probably line. Get 600 pounds. He's a big so, man." I mean, uh, <laughs> the, the way I see it personally is, if you don't have a spot on the show, and don't be. In. <laughs> and and especially if the guy that is in the show doesn't know what you're up to, don't try anything because he doesn't. I mean, you know, he doesn't know. So exactly. And, and again, I say this to reiterate. You know, at the time, I thought Tommy was probably the biggest piece of junk in the world because I was a fan at the time as well. Yeah. I'm like, dude, are you serious? That's it's crazy, as Dad. Are you serious? Yeah. But at the same time, it's a 600 pound man going after a 150 pound sick man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Tommy ain't ever been healthy at the time I knew him. I mean, so. if, if, no matter, if you stand over here, I see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I see your point. If I stand over here, I see your point. I I mean, I think that was just an unfortunate situation. Right, but right. I can't fault uh, I can't fault Tommy. You can't fault no, Tommy. definitely not. And unfortunately, both of those guys are gone, passed, passed away. away. Yeah, exactly. So. so name association. I say name, first name pops in your head. <laughs> All right. Let's start with him. Tommy Jaggers and Jaggers, Inc. Tommy Jaggers, I rough uh, Tommy Jaggers was very very rough he was very real um, he was one of those guys that he lived the gimmick Tommy Jaggers in front of the crowd was Tommy Jaggers in the back he was Tommy Jaggers um, in the car going to a show I mean he was Tommy he, yes. he, but he was rough and he was real so and, you know that's that's not a bad thing that's a very good thing to me mm -hmm. the East Texas wrecking crew um, I would have said, okay, if you look at it from ACW, I would say underrated, underutilized. Um, I think we we were uh, underappreciated, um, especially with with the Cowboys from Hell being there at ACW. I think um, I think we deserved more than we got. Uh, there was a, a point in our feud that we were, you know, we were the heels. But we were so over, you know, we had to turn face. And um, New Age Dog and, and whoever, you know, whoever the hell else was booking refused to take the titles off the Cowboys from Hell and put them on us. Um, and, I, you know, Scott and I both were very frustrated at that. You know, we, we thought we deserved, you know, not because, like, oh, we want the titles, but just because of storytelling purposes. The crowd wanted us to win, you know, so I think um, underappreciated. Agreed. Last of the real. 
every aspect of Last of the Real. Man, so that group went through like <laughs> if I could, if I remember correctly, because I'm pretty sure I'll forget some of the members. It was myself, Brad Cusa, Court Caution, and Jeremy Preston, if I remember correctly. Am I, am I forgetting anyone? You had one in there for about two minutes, but we'll leave him out for later. Okay. Um, that was a fun group. It, it, I don't think it ever really matured into what my vision was at the time, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way it, the way it turned out because it gave uh, Brad Cusa and Jeremy Preston, who were extremely young in the business, it gave them something, and uh, they they brought it over to LOL. So I mean, you know, really, yeah. The other one that was there for two minutes. Let's move into there. The okay. Sex Kings. The Sex Kings. Uh, you know, we were just talking about that earlier, and, and you know, <laughs> when the guys were before the before the production meeting and stuff, and uh, we were talking about their favorite versions of Chris Preston. And I, I said my favorite version was the Sex King. Um, that that was fun. That was that was Hunter and I riding back from a show, riding to a show, talking and, and you know agreeing that we didn't want to be the Prestons. You know we wanted something different. So we was like let's we don't want to be Preston. You know any version of the Preston Bros or anything like that. So we're gonna do that. We're, we was wrestling on a kind of a. Uh, show that you can do anything. I'm like, fuck it, let's be the sex, uh, the sex kings. We originally took, we PG'd it and became the fling kings, but it was like, fuck it, we'll be the sex kings. All right. So, the Mayhem Mafia. Um, the Mayhem Mafia was and is probably uh, my favorite era of wrestling um, because. We were ourselves. We are, you know, that's. We took ourselves and amplified it, turned it up, and played off each other. Um, Dylan and I, you know, we fed off each other. Um, we brought Kane into the group. Uh, we, you know, we. I think. I think we gave Kane a good rub. We gave Kane. Uh, my goal is always to like pass knowledge on. That's what I like doing. So I think. I think the idea behind having Kane there was teaching Kane how to talk to a crowd, how to work with a crowd. And I think he, I think we showed him some stuff. I think we helped him. Um, and then eventually bringing Matt Locke into it. Um, Matt's personality kind of was a mirror image of our personality. So the three of us together, you know, was, there was never a dull moment, you know. Car rides were fucking stupid. Stupid, hilarious, you know. <laughs> backstage, um, re any sort of any combination of us wrestling, tag teaming, it was just fun. It was, you know, it was one of the one of the, you know, my fond, you know, any fond memory that I think of is was with the Mayhem Mafia. It was it was good, it was good times, you know. It was, it was real fun work. Gotcha. Court caution. Court caution, uh, brother. Court is he is my brother. Um, I've known Court since 2006, I think. Um, so pretty much my whole wrestling career. Um, and, you know, we've been friends more than we've been enemies in wrestling. And, you know, everything, I think everything we've done, whether it's tag teaming, you know, lasted real three times, uh, whatever, or fighting, and you know a, a bloodbath. I think it's you know it's been fun. Court's uh, Court's one of the first guys that I really made a connection with in wrestling, and um, you know he's he's my brother. Just insane. Well, I said me and y'all you know, say Court's the first guy that you know really made a connection with. Uh, Justin is he's another he's another brother. Um, and uh, I say that in a totally different sense than, you know, Court and I, because Justin and I trained together. Uh, we, we got into the business together. We, you know, we grew up in the business together. I wrestled Justin probably at least a thousand times at, at, at ACW. You know, there was, you know, we were constantly trying to kill each other. Um, 
And we even had a brief stint as, as a tag team, you know, but I think we're better enemies than we are, you know, friends. But, yeah, he's he's my little brother, you know, essentially. He, we, we grew up together in wrestling, so. Sean Cordova. Uh, Sean Cordova, he's uh, he's a mentor. He's he's big brother. Um, Cordova has shown me um, a lot in wrestling. He's one of those guys that you know starting out with with you know that, that I've, I've talked about Goose, Joey Titan, uh, Bruiser, all those guys was there. Um, Cordova, he was one of the first guys at an ACW show that you know when I when I started going to ACW shows and being all of them. He was one of the first guys that gave me advice in the back. You know, he was like, "Hey, man, you should do this or you shouldn't do that." So uh, I kind of like gravitated to towards him and Jason Sky, um, kind of because they they talked to me, and they were friendly to me. They didn't, you know, they weren't doing the the whole hazing bullshit, you know, back then or anything like that. They were good guys, and I've learned a lot from Cordova. Cordova, I think he's taught me a lot about um, storytelling. He's an excellent storyteller. I think you know, the, 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 the psychological side on, of wrestling, of why we do stuff, um, how we do stuff. Um, so uh, he's helped me a lot. I think, you know, I, I consider him a mentor. He's a he's big brother. So. I got with my kids today and I said, is there anything in particular that I need to ask Preston? And my oldest said, ask him about the match of the decade. Okay. When I say match of the decade, which one pops in your head? Court Caution, Chris Preston, um, Texas Face-Off 7. That's the one right yeah. there, <laughs> Texas Face-Off 7. Texas Face-Off 7, yeah. Uh, that was, um, the storyline to that match, the build-up to it, was I thought was was great. Um you know, my wife Laura says I'm a better bad guy than I am a good guy, but I was the good guy going in that match, and I think I had like, I think I was able to get everyone behind me um, going into there. Everybody hated Court. Everybody hated Tommy. Everybody hated Alan Michaels, and so I think I had all the support going into that match. You know, we um, we told a, a hell of a story. I bled everywhere. Um, suplex on the bleachers. <laughs> suplex on the bleachers. Yeah, I think if you go back and watch that match, um, uh, Court does something on the outside. It's one of the first. He does like a moonsault on the outside, and then he in the first hit, it's like, I mean, it's like the stiffest punch. One of the stiffest punches I've ever taken in wrestling, and he just goes to town, just ground and pound. And I had no, I, I couldn't do anything but just cover up. And, I, you know, there was fans there. You know, we were, like, in the fans, so I couldn't, like, lighten up, brother, or anything like that. You just take it, you know. <laughs> so, that, yeah, that's that was, uh, and it, I think it was probably, I mean, they, they called it Match of the Decade. I think, you know, that's a huge honor. And um, it was one of my favorites. I, I enjoyed it. It was very, it, it was a very tough match, for sure. And finally, Chris Preston. Um, well, I think it, it just depends, Chris Preston, it, it depends on what Chris Preston, uh, you know, Chris Preston the trainer, Chris Preston the wrestler, um, the teacher, you know, right now in wrestling, I always tell everybody, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm hitting my prime, this is, you know, this is my prime, I'm, no signs of slowing down, um, but, you know, the trainer, like, I found a niche in training, I think. Um, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy, you know, training, passing knowledge down. It's, it's fun. Um, especially if you get somebody that, that wants to learn, that soaks it in like a sponge. Um, it, it's fun. It's, and you, you can get, um, you know, you can, you just get m more into it. So, um, yeah, that's, you know. I don't know. There's two Chris Pressons. There, there's there's two different ones. So, I've got two more questions, and I'll leave you alone. Okay. First one. To me, there's a different kind of opponent. 
So my question is, who's your favorite opponent? Okay. Number one, skill level. Number two, that told the best story with you. They can be the same guy, but you know that match to where he's just a hell of a worker. And then there's that match, man, we just told the best story ever. So your favorite opponent's on both aspects. So, skill level, um, I've had really great matches with Aaron Swan. Um, and it, it, it was to the point where, like, we were booking, like, Rock and Russell Fest. And we were, we were putting together, like, just fantasy matches. And I'm like, you know, Gusher Days is the same way. We're putting together fantasy matches. And, you know, I'm like, I want to wrestle Aaron Storm. Because every match is a banger. You know, last month, wrestled Aaron Storm for the Digital Media Championship. And I think any match that Storm and I have, we can, we can put it in the category for match of the year. I mean, you can just... Take all of our matches throughout the year, put them in a hat, draw one, and put it up against any other match. And I think it's it's a strong candidate. Um, storytelling. Um, you know, early in the League of Lions, um, I told a very good story that drug out for a year, maybe, a year and a half. Um, the Brotherhood versus the Prestons. That match... Um, you know, we had a series of matches, you know, Chains, Canes, and Carnage. Um, you know, several, several matches, whether it be tag or singles. But the Mad Titan Con, you know, the stories, the matches were brutal because Con, you know, he doesn't, I don't think he's the most technical guy, but he just beats people up. So, you wrestle Con, you know, you're like, oh, well, don't worry about a chin lock or anything like that. You know, worry about, you know, Throwing, throwing bows, punching, kicking, um, and trying to dodge punches and kicks, you know. Um, chops along the way, huh? Jeez. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but, um, no, the storylines, that the story that we told, um, whether it was him attacking, you know, Papa Preston, kidnapping Jeremy Preston, um, beating up my girlfriend at the time, you know, it, it all like it all it all like all those things seem like really big things like holy shit he just beat up Chris Preston's dad but if you if you look at those storyline as a whole it all it all led to a big match and you know I think those moments made that match you know they they made that match bigger I guess you can say so, and, you know, it's a good story. It was a slow burn story, I think, and it, you know, it's one of my favorite stories that I've told. Five years. Where do you see League of Lions? <clears throat> um, five years? <sighs> that's that's kind of hard because, you know, if you look at, if you look at the growth from year one through nine, and then compare that to the growth that we had, that we've done from January to now. It's like we we hit warp speed. We figured out light travel, mm -hmm. and we're, I mean, like we're doing things now that I think you know we're moving at a at, at a really fast pace. Um, production, uh, social media, uh, you know. Everything, everything, you know, the wrestling's always been there, I think. Um, but now we're, we're, you know, we're getting things out there. So, um, five years from now, man, I, I hope that we're, we're looked at as one of the biggest wrestling promotions in Texas. Um, I hope that, you know, you know, our social media following is out there. I hope we're, you know, more famous, I guess you can say, as, you know, as people, you know, thousands of followers on social media watching our stuff on YouTube. I hope that, you know, we're more, we're, we're more of a household name in the, in the Texas indie scene, I guess you can say. Because I think a lot of people in the scene knows LOL, but 
I want, you know, fans to be like, oh, you're going to LOL next weekend? Cool, I'll tune in and watch them on Twitch, you know. I want them talking to their, you know, their favorite wrestler at ABC Wrestling in, in El Paso or wherever. And, yeah, I seen you on LOL last week. You know, can I get your autograph here? I want, I, you know, that's my goal is to make make LOL a mainstay. Now get selfish. Okay. Chris Preston in five years. Uh, well, I mean. Are you still banging in the ring? Or are you backstage? What What are we thinking? And, and. Five years from now, I'll be 40. Um, so, in my head, I'm still wrestling. Um, I don't consider myself one of those um, reckless workers. I take care of myself. Uh, all my all my matches are, you know, pretty safe. 99.9% .9 of my matches are, are very safe. Um, just leave the gimmicks out, right? Yeah, <laughs> leave, leave the leave the gimmicks out. Um, so I mean, there's no I I don't see I don't see any sign of me slowing down. Um, I've actually stepped back from the the backstage you know aspect of wrestling. Uh, I don't I don't really do anything backstage anymore. I just wrestle. Um, I really don't have any say so in creative or anything. I can just like, just like anybody else in the backstage, um, I can toss my ideas into the hat. But you know, as far as like creatives, uh, you know, title changes, um, race to the top winners, fly line invitational winners, whatever. Yeah, I don't have any say so over that anymore. I've I've given it back up, and I think it's been a positive thing for me. Because my stress level has come down, um, it's less on my plate. I can focus more on helping um, people like Zach on the on the social media side, on the, on all the on the, you know everything non wrestling show related, non storytelling related. I can focus elsewhere and contribute there, and I can do so on a in a way that is you know. It's not stress, not stressful for me. Um, and we, you know, we got guys. I think that uh, you know, Justin, he's the booker now. I think he is. Um, I think he's still having growing pains because I don't think he. Everything he does isn't perfect, and you can't expect him to be because he's still very new to this. You know, the the booking side. He's been wrestling just as long as I have, so. Uh, you know, this is his first first time venturing into really storytelling booking, um, but he's doing a great job. I think. I think. Um, I think he's kind of, you know, taking the ball and running with it, and I think he's only going to get better. Agreed. So, but Agreed. yeah, I think I, I think I'll still be doing what I'm doing now, wrestling, um, full steam ahead. No, no chance or. No, uh, no, no, you know, no desire to slow down, no need to slow down. Um, I feel great, um, for the most part. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm going to wrestle. Before we close this thing out, I'm going to stroke your ego for a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, I started this thing talking about being a lifelong fan and getting introduced in Independent professional wrestling at Texas Elite Wrestling. Through storytellings, I was able to be involved as a ring announcer. Job got in the way, and we needed to figure out a way for me to go away. You made it happen. Scared shitless that I'm about <laughs> to eat sweet chin music and go through a table. To kill the fat boy. Was this at Gusher Days or was this, this at was the, Union Grove? This was the first time you put me through a table. Okay. First time at uh, Weldon for Face Off yes. 9. Okay. 9 or 10. I think it was 9. Okay. Face yeah. Off 9. And uh, scared to death. Walked me through it. Made it happen perfectly. To where because of that moment, you've allowed me to be a kid at heart for the better part of... 12 years now. You put me through a table three times. Yeah, I know it was several. I couldn't remember exactly which one it was. Three times. <laughs> um, 
you've allowed me to be part of the storyline. Uh, you've allowed me to be part of that that brotherhood that I only got to watch on TV. Hell, you're in the you're in the title lineage. You know, you're a, <laughs> you're an untamed champion. Damn right. <laughs> no, uh, no I, I do appreciate what you do for me and my family more than you know. Um, I think way too much, and I question way too much, but I want you to know in my heart of hearts, you're a very special person to me and my family, and well, I appreciate you. I appreciate that. I think um, I think in, in professional wrestling, you know, you know, wherever you are in it, whether you're a ring announcer, a referee, a wrestler, a manager, I think it's good to question. I, I don't think anyone should, you know, if someone tells you to stop questioning, you know, then you need to like, well, what are, what are your motives then? So, I mean, it's always good. That's to, exactly right, the motives. If your heart's in the right place to try to make it better, I think question all day. If you're questioning yes. to be a douchebag, shut your mouth. You know, <laughs> but anyway, I just, here on a public platform, I do want to thank you, Chris Preston, the man. I won't throw that out there if yeah. you don't want it out there. Yeah. Chris Preston, the man. I do appreciate you and I value your friendship. I thank you so much. Now, back to the real world, the digital media champion. What are we doing next month? Oh, well, see, okay, so Chris Preston, the digital media champion. Uh, these cats, they done stuck me in a match with Jeremy Preston, okay? And, you know, Jeremy Preston, he doesn't want to face Chris Preston for the digital media championship. Jeremy Preston doesn't know what he wants to do, okay? So I'm going to have to talk with Jeremy Preston. We're going to go have a talk with Justin Sane. We'll get Jeremy Preston in the Lionheart Championship match. We'll pair him up with somebody, put him against the Storm Chasers, but he doesn't want to wrestle me. I mean, who does? I mean, who wants... I mean, everyone wants to wrestle me for that rub, but they don't want to wrestle me because they're going to lose. I mean, just take the L, you know. So, I mean, it's it's a lose-lose situation. or it's a, Well, no, it's a win-win situation. A win-lose situation, I guess you would say. Because you get the rub, but you take the L. So, I mean, your star comes out brighter, but you lost. So, I mean, and Jeremy doesn't need, you know, he's a Preston, so he doesn't need that rub. He already has it. It's in his last name, so he, it's a lose-lose situation for Jeremy. So, we're going to go have a talk with Justin Sane, and we're going to change that. So, don't, don't, don't count on seeing Jeremy Preston versus Justin Sane at Patriotic Punch. Or... It's a Dirty World in August or Rise of Lions 10. It's just not going to happen, okay, Slim? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's All not right. going to happen. Especially if he runs and jumps in the car again, huh? <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there. <laughs> again, make sure you check this man out. The League of Lions Digital Media Champion. Follow him on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Right here on YouTube, the Chris Preston Show. Make sure you check it out. League of Lions Wrestling. Follow us on Twitch. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Am I missing anything else, guys? League of Lions. League of Lions Pro Wrestling .com, The new and improved website uploaded, uploaded, updated almost daily. Again, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here on the Lions Den. It has been my pleasure to be with Mr. I'm Better Than You, Chris Preston. This is Slim, and we're out of here. Our initials might be LOL, but we ain't no joke. Good night, everybody.